Hello everyone, Sakuya here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different because today's episode is both a history episode and also a archaeology news update thing, kind of like back when we did the Cleopatra episode. Because guys, there is big news in the archaeology or history or, well, probably any number of other fields, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of this that this probably touches. There's a lot of news. There's a really big thing of news about this. I'm, I'm stumbling over myself because this is something that at this point I'm actually pretty excited about. Roman concrete. The substance that literally built Rome, the thing that we have tried to figure out for years exactly how it is that it's created, has actually been figured out now. Like, they, they understand it. Now, for a number of you, you may not really understand as to why this is a really big deal, or this may not seem something that should be cared about as much, or like why this is cool. But please buckle up just a little bit of an explanation so I can tell you what's going on. We are talking about the ancient Roman Empire, the thing that makes its presence known throughout all of Europe that all of us kind of fanboys, well, at least in the Western world, typically start to hearken back to when talking about anything with history. The bathhouses, the aqueducts, the seawalls, all these different things that we have from over 2,000 years ago that are still standing today. That is not the case for the majority of buildings in history. That really isn't. But all of this is thanks to a very special building material that they used, concrete. Now, you're going to look at me and you're going to say, okay, it's concrete. We have concrete now. Why is that a big deal? Well, the concrete that we have now just really does not compare into how long lasting the concrete of old is. I mean, the whole 2000 year longevity mark in there should probably tell you that right there. And finally, now after years, researchers say that they have figured out as to why Roman concrete remains so resilient. Quick lime used in the mix may have given the material self healing properties. Again, that might sound odd. We're, we're not talking about nano machines that go in and build up structures from the ground up after they've been destroyed. No, no, no. But it is something that is very unique, and I'm going to explain this. You see, Romans were not the first to invent concrete. They, they absolutely weren't. But they were the first people to employ it on a mass scale. I mean, by 200 BC, concrete was being used in the majority of construction projects. Roman concrete would consist of a mix of a white powder known as slaked lime, along with small particles and rock fragments that are called tephra that are ejected by volcanic eruptions. That and water. But the interesting thing to note is that this mix of materials is not anything special when compared to modern concrete. If you mixed these materials and used them in the exact same way as modern concrete, it would not still stand the test of time. It wouldn't live for the duration that old concrete did. You could not use this material to make the Parthenon like they did, a brick-faced building that has withstood the ravages of weathering in near perfect condition. It sits magnificently in the business district of Rome. Such a building would be impossible using modern concrete. And that is because if you go and look at modern concrete in contrast, this is something that is typically made of Portland cement, a mixture of limestone, clay, sand, chalk, and other ingredients that has been ground and burnt at scorching temperatures, which none of that is a problem. It's a very strong material. The issue then comes in that the lifetime of this material is significantly shorter as it begins to crumble around after 50 years or so, which brings us to the question of why. Why does Roman concrete last so long then? Well, scientists have tried to explain this, and in 2017, as an example, researchers found that at least for structures that were being exposed to the ocean, seawater would react with the ingredients of the concrete to create new, tougher minerals. But that doesn't really solve the question of what would happen with everything else that wasn't by the ocean and why those materials would also last. So in order to find out what other explanations you could have for this, you have Admir Masik, who is a chemist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, who, along with his colleagues, went and gathered concrete samples from an ancient city wall in Privernum, which is a 2,000-year-old archaeological site near Rome. Back in the lab, they would focus on small calcium deposits that were embedded in the concrete, known as lime lumps. Considering the day and age of the material, when looking at these lime lumps, it was very reasonable for people to assume that, okay, this is probably just something due to poor mixing or sourcing materials or something like that as to why you would have lumps within everything else. But what Masik and his team was wondering was whether or not lime was being added to the mix before water on purpose, if this was something that was just done. 
This very widely available white powder, which is made from burning limestone, would have reacted with water during mixing, which would spark a chemical reaction that produced a significant amount of heat. That would then have prevented the lime from fully dissolving, resulting in lime lumps. And as it turns out, when they tested this theory, it was right. Following that exact same set of procedures, they ended up with a substance that was identical in structure to the material that they were studying. Okay, so awesome, now they have the same material, but it still doesn't answer the question of why does it last so long? Well, what the team did is they went and created small cracks in the concrete, something that would simulate what would happen over time as the material would age. And then what they would do next is add water, similarly to what would happen if it rained and then rain water got into the cracks, just like what it would in the real world. What they saw was that those lime lumps that were inside of the concrete would dissolve and then reform and recrystallize with the water, effectively sealing the cracks. Which meant that the concrete would stay whole and strong. I mean, modern concrete is capable of doing this, but the difference between modern concrete and old concrete is that modern concrete is only able to heal cracks that are anywhere between like 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters. The Roman concrete that they were making, though, was able to heal up to 0.6 millimeters, two to three times as wide or severe of damage as what modern concrete could. It's like ancient nanomachines, but lime. Honestly, at this point, there really isn't much to say from it. They've come to a series of different conclusions regarding what it is that this could be useful for or why this could be good for modern construction, such as the fact that in using this material, you don't have to worry about something aging to the same degree, so you have to make less concrete, and concrete is very intensive of a process to go through in order to make it, which means that for companies, this could be both a cost-saving effort, but also simultaneously through less production of concrete, you could have less greenhouse gases being pumped up into the atmosphere. So there's all kinds of environmental bonuses that could come from this too. Already there's talks with a series of companies for going and producing Roman concrete for the use in construction. And I can honestly just say, I am so excited to see from here where it goes. It's just, it makes me incredibly happy to see this stuff. I love ancient knowledge and how it comes back to really help us at times. It's, it's so cool. But anyway, everyone, that is the update on Roman concrete. That is the explanation for how it actually worked. If you'd like to see something here, please let me know in the comment section below if there's any other kind of archaeology updates or anything that you are interested about that you want to know more on or explained. Please let me know in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, do anything you can to help this video in the algorithm. And guys, I will see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone.